Hello and thank you for joining us. Today I'm gonna to be discussing a D13 Volvo with a failed head. This engine has just been recently overhauled and has about 20,000 miles on it. And the customer started reporting excessive oil consumption. We're talking about two and a half gallons a week. That's tons of oil. We're gonna show you what we found in, on this engine and how we were able to pinpoint the problem. If you like this type of content, be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or we release a new video. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. We are located at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas, 75241. Let's get right into this video. Okay, so what we have here, as I mentioned, is a D13 that's been consuming a lot of oil, two and a half gallons a week to be exact. This is the actual cylinder head that we have to remove. We have it here displayed. I'm gonna show you what we did to actually pinpoint what was going on with this particular engine. But I wanna explain a little bit about this head. Now, we have it off, of course, and we see some buildup here. We have a lot of buildup because if you, don't if you do have an oil leak and it's not external, more than likely it's gonna be internal. Usually with a newly overhauled engine, sometimes the piston rings will take some time to settle and you will have some excessive oil burn. But two and a half gallons after 20,000 miles, that's just giving us an indication of something going wrong. So when we inspect this particular truck, what we're looking for is where is this oil going? Where is it coming from? Of course, it's coming from the inside of the engine, but how is it getting into the cylinders? Okay, a lot of times it's gonna be tough to pinpoint because you're not gonna see the smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe because of after treatment systems. You have a DOC and a DPF that's blocking all that so that you don't see it on the exhaust side. So <clears throat> the first thing that we did is pull the exhaust off and we did see the turbo with oil on the exhaust side. We did see the exhaust side manifold full of oil. This is giving us indication that the oil is going inside the engine and getting burnt. Now, when we look at the intake side of the, of the actual head, we're looking for signs of oil as well. If oil is being ingested in the intake, that's gonna be either a oil, either a turbo passing oil over to the intake side, and it's gonna give us oil consumption, which is kind of an easy fix if it is a turbo. But in this case, our intake side, which we're gonna give you some shots of, is completely dry. Our exhaust is wet, showing that we are getting oil being pushed out of the engine. Uh, we're gonna give you some close-ups of what we, how, what we found on this particular engine. And we also see all this buildup. We have buildup on the cylinder head from where the oil is not being completely burned. This starts to build up carbon. Now this is very dangerous for the engine. It's gonna cause a lot of buildup. It's gonna cause low performance. And it can get to a point where this carbon gets so hard that it breaks off and you can have scuff liners causing low compression, more low performance. This particular truck still had a solid compression test when we ran it. So we didn't see any indications of scuff liners. That's why we dug in further to find out what was going on here. Now valve seals, the way that they work is on the top of this head, I'm gonna see if I can rotate this head for you. The top of this head here is where the top of the valves are, okay? Now you, you have your, your cam here and your rockers are what's pushing these valves on, pushing these valves up and down, in and out. Now, all this is filled with oil. This truck, this head is, is, is standing up, but when it sits on the truck, it's filled with oil, so the seals that are on these valves are supposed to keep this oil from passing in through into the combustion chamber. This is what happens. You have oil that actually passes through these seals and goes into the combustion chamber. Now, if seal fails like this, it's not gonna be just a little bit of oil. It's gonna be excessive oil. We don't see it on the intake side, but we do see it on the exhaust side being pushed all out. I'm gonna show you some more components that were filled with oil after this particular seal failure. Now, Impact, which is our online source of manuals for these particular engines, does state that we can replace these seals on these, on these valves, but after this buildup that's happening on this head, all this buildup is still gonna be on this head. Now, with this truck being brand new, we would recommend getting the head warrantied, especially if it's warranty through Volvo. So we're gonna warrant, get this head warrantied out and get it replaced. I wanna show you some more of the components before we actually got to the head 
that kind of kind of led us to where where the actual problem is on this particular truck. So let's move over to some of the components that you're also going to see if you have excessive oil consumption like this particular engine here. Okay, so now we're here at the table. I have a few components here uh, so that we can actually explain how we got down to the head and the valve seals being our problem. Um, let me explain to you what parts I have here. First is the exhaust manifold. Now the exhaust manifold is one of the first items after the turbo that we inspect. And we see that the ports where it bolts onto the engine are just full of oil. We got signs of oil. This is definitely indications of oil going into or coming out of the engine. Now this turbo bolts onto the exhaust manifold. And if you're not, uh, per, if you're not sure of how a turbo works, the pressure from this manifold is gonna be pushing on the hot side of this turbo and spin the hot side of this turbine. On the other side of this turbo is another turbine which is gonna be pulling in air from your air filter and pushing it into the intake. That's how our turbo works. Now, the turbo is showing to be full of oil on the hot side, not on the cold side. Now, if we had an issue before, as I mentioned, where we have a turbo passing oil on the cold side, this boost that's coming out of this turbo is gonna be pushed into the intake side of the engine. When that happens and all that oil is being passed through, that's where we'll have more indication of oil being the source of the, or the turbo being the source of the problem with uh, excessive oil consumption. But since this is dry, our cold side is dry, I also have the intake manifold here, and there's signs of it. There is soot buildup, but it's dry. It's not showing that any oil is being in, introduced into the, into the intake side of this engine, so it's not gonna be the turbo that's causing the problem. Now, another item I pulled off here and showed you here is the, is the EGR cooler. Now, since the EGR, the EGR is by the valve, let me turn this over here. The EGR valve is gonna be bolted onto the exhaust manifold, and it's basically just going to redirect the EGR exhaust gases back into the intake, but before it does that, it passes through a cooler. Now, since this is straight off the manifold and we're having oil contamination coming straight off the exhaust, this is why we're showing oil in our EGR cooler. So this is gonna need to be clean. Our intakes need to, need to be clean. All these are, are items that are gonna need to be clean before we go back onto the truck with it. Now, I'm gonna, the last thing I wanna show you is uh, what we see on the pistons because we wanna ensure that we didn't have any damage on the pistons. As I mentioned, this truck was ran about 20,000 miles before it was brought in, burning about two and a half gallons a week, which is very excessive. You can see the manifold how much oil is in this manifold. You can also see how much oil is coming out of the backside of this turbo, which is gonna go down to the after treatment system and cause, of course, the DOC to be clogged and the DPF causing more regens because this truck is just basically not running like it's supposed to. As I mentioned, the last item I wanna discuss with you is the pistons and how they look and the carbon buildup on these pistons. So let's move over to the engine and that's gonna be the last item I wanna discuss with you on this particular job. Okay, so now we're here at the engine. I wanna give you some uh, view of what the pistons look like. And as I mentioned before, this can be damaging to the engine if you have a lot of oil consumption because that burnt oil can become very hard carbon deposits and it can actually scrape the liners. Now, when we look down here on the engine, we're checking the top of the piston domes and we, we see a little bit of, of carbon buildup already but it's not too extreme. Also, this is number two. We're looking at number five here. We, we still, you can see the oils built up here. Now, we've checked the liners to see if there's any signs of scuffing. We didn't see any signs of scuffing, so we're able to catch this before we have any kind of low power complaints. If you have this particular problem where you have high consumption of oil and you do a compression test and you have low compression, that could be an indicator of a scuff liner. But thankfully, this engine is not, does not have any scuff linings, so we're gonna be all right with replacing the head. We're gonna get this cleaned up and hopefully get this truck back on the road pretty quickly. So this is everything that we found with an engine that had high oil consumption, two and a half gallons a week, as I mentioned, that's pretty high. If you're having issues with your truck, you can schedule an appointment and call us at 972 225-3017. We're located at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas, 75241. 
If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to share, like, and subscribe to our channel, guys. And until next time, be safe.